Hi. So, so this is AS Biology Revision. It, this is kind of helping me, so that's why I'm doing them. So I hope it will help you too. Um, another thing I'm really confused on is like tissue fluids and lymph. So I'm going to try and talk way through my way through this. Um, maybe it can help you to a bit. So with tissue fluid and lymph, according to these are my notes, I've made like a timeline of what happens with them. So first of all, the pressure inside the capillaries. So this is like the capillary vein end, um, vein end, artery end. So the pressure inside the capillaries is greater than the pressure in like the tissue fluid. So this causes the fluid to come out of, out of the capillaries and into the spaces around the arteries forming tissue fluid. So as the fluid leaves, the pressure is like reduced in the capillaries because all of this stuff is leaving them. So the pressure and the water potential at the end of the capillaries nearest nearest the vein is lower than the water potential in the tissue fluid around it. So the water re-enters the capillaries from um, the tissue fluid at the vein end by osmosis because there's like the lower water potential gradient set up so it's near back in and the, um, so all the fluid re-enters. But not all the tissue fluid re-enters the capillaries. Um, some is left over as excess tissue fluid. So this excess tissue fluid, um, these are called lymph vessels. So what happens? It passes into these lymph vessels, and um, the lymph vessels move. They all go towards the main vessels in the thorax. So and as they're all going towards it, it's all returned to the blood nearest the heart. Um, so yeah. So that's like the timeline. And I've also got notes about it. So this is notes just about tissue fluid, like whatever it is. So tissue fluid surrounds the cells in tissues. So tissue fluid surrounds the cells in the tissues. And it's made from substances that leave the blood, um, like your water and nutrients, they all leave the blood. So that's what it's made of. And the cells take in oxygen and nutrients from the tissue fluid. But the cells also release metabolic waste um, into the tissue fluid. So it's like a lot of things in there. But um, in a capillary, um, cannot read what my writing says. In the capillary bed, and where all the capillaries are, um, substances move out of the capillaries into the tissue fluid, like what we just went through in the timeline. Um, it's called pressure filtration. So that's about it. And let's see what else I've got. Oh yeah. Um, so in tissue fluid, I'll go through a list of what there are. In tissue fluid, um, there are only the only cells in there are some neutrophil white blood cells. That's the only cells. There are no other cells in tissue fluid. Um, there are some proteins, um, some hormones, and these proteins secreted by body cells. Uh, no fat, uh, a little bit of glucose, but uh, these are absorbed by body cells. A little bit of amino acids, but these are absorbed by body cells. A little bit of oxygen, absorbed by body cells. And there's quite a lot of carbon dioxide. This is released by body cells. So, yeah. And then for lymph, the only cells in lymph are lymphocytes. Um, and the lymph contains lots of lymphocytes and these are produced in the lymph node. Um, the lymph node are like these swellings found in intervals along the lymphatic system, which are the vessels. And these like filter any bacteria or foreign material like from the lymph fluid. So um, the lymphocytes that are in there, these then like engulf them, engulf the, and destroy the bacteria and foreign particles. So it's not in there. So um, it protects the immune system from infection. Um, there are some proteins in the lymph. Um, there's more fats in the lymph than there is in blood because these are absorbed from the don't have to say lacteals, L-A-C-T-E-A-L-S in intestine. Um, not very much glucose, not very many amino acids, not very much oxygen. There is quite a lot of carbon dioxide. Um, just not that much, quite a lot, but like just more than blood, basically. Um, I do the blood as well because I've got it here, even though that's not what we're talking about as much. Um, in the blood, there are erythrocytes, um, neutrophils, and um, platelets. The proteins in the blood are hormones and are plasma proteins. Fats are sometimes supported as like lipoproteins around the blood. Um, there's 80 to 120 mg per. Um, 100 cm cubed of uh, glucose in the blood. There are some amino acids. Um, there's oxygen, obviously. There's carbon dioxide, but like not very much because 
if you don't want comedy dot food and you're as much. Um, and that's all I can really think of to talk about for this. Um, I guess I could show you a little um, diagram of like what happens in it. Oh, I'm gonna bend this one to show you. Show it to you. Okay. So I have to hold it really close. This is what I'm gonna show you is like um, the pressures in the blood. Hydrostatic pressure. I don't know if you can. Oh, it's gonna be backwards for you too, so you're not gonna really be able to see it. I sort of talk you through it because I need to understand it too. Um, there's the areteral end, which is the artery. Like, oh, sorry, these are capillaries. Um, so in a the capillary, there's the areteral end where the artery where it comes in, and the venal end, um, like where it meets the vein, where it comes out, and the direction of blood flows this way, obviously. So um, at the areteral end, um, there's hydrostatic pressure and effects of water potential seen in it, and also at the venal end. And the hydrostatic pressure, which is just pressure, that tends to like push, that's one that pushes fluid out into the capillaries, that's what like forces the fluid out. And there's a net outflow of 1.2 kPa of hydrostatic pressure and effective water potential. Because this doesn't make much sense if you think about, if you like rewind the video and look what we were talking about before, which is like the pressure which makes the water go in and um, the like fluids come out. So there's, so at the, the beginning end, there's quite a lot of net outflow. Obviously, because he says all of the um, tissue fluid comes out of the capillaries. So then, um, if, oh, seriously, if you rewind it and then watch this bit again and watch it back, you'll kind of understand it. That's why I just had to read it back, read it back, read it back. Because my teacher explained it, and he kind of just showed us the diagram, and we were like, "What is that?" I didn't even know if it's. I didn't even know if it was, it was, it was a capillary or a vein. I didn't know what an areteral end was. So, and then at the end, at the venal end, where the vein is. The net, there's an inflow because there's not an outflow again. You have to completely just so I always thought, why is there another outflow? There's not, there's an inflow because there's remember the fluid and everything on the water is going back into the capillary. Um, so there's a net inflow of negative 1.5 kPa. It's going back in again. So it goes out here and in here. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's what I think of. Um, if you want a little diagram of just so you can sort of work out in your head why is there an artery end and a vein, a vein end? Because I was always like, why is, what does that mean in the capillary? They don't just go duh, duh, duh. But they kind of do. Um, there's just, remember the capillary um, bed, bed of capillaries, that's what I'm telling you about. And this is what it looks That's what like the capillaries look like. So up there is the artery. Um, and then it goes whoo, all down, they all go down into the capillary beds and that's where this is all, that's where all we're talking about happens and then it comes out into the vein and goes back to the heart boof, to get pumped into the lungs so get more oxygen so that's what I can think of about this and I've said that three times ignore that um, yeah so good luck knowing about blood tissue fluid and lymph I hope this helped you I'm probably still going to read it over and <laughs> I get I guess quite a lot of my video especially about that diagram won't make much sense but seriously just read it over read it backwards and forwards backwards and forwards and um, just listen to the beginning of the video when I'm talking about the timeline and then go back to the diagram and it will make more sense so good luck with your AS biology exam